Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday there in the Caribbean, there was a magnitude 5.1 earthquake, 79 kilometers off the coast of Cuba. So this would be about 49 miles. It would be along the Cayman Trough and probably an aftershock from the January magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake they had back in January. This was along the Oriente Fault Zone. Here you can see that fault zone and I'll bring it all out here. It travels along um, above uh, the coastline of the Dominican Republic. This fault zone is also responsible for the 1842 uh, Cape Haiti earthquake. It was estimated to be about a magnitude 8.1. The population was a lot smaller than what it is now, and in 1842 they figured about 5,000 people were killed by the earthquake and another 300 by the following tsunamis. They believed that the Septennial um, Oriente Fault Zone was the cause of this earthquake right here. Yeah, the land turned to quicksand, and there was a tsunami they figured was about 5 meters or 16 feet. The setting here is we have the Caribbean plate sliding underneath the North American plate. And there's a spreading zone here. This is called the Mid-Cayman Spreading Center. The Septoriano Oriente Fault is responsible for a lot of large earthquakes. Here we got 2004, a magnitude 6.8. Uh, 1992, another 6.8. And then January, like I said, January of this year, there was a magnitude 7.0. In this area between the Walton Fault, we have the Gavani uh, microplate and the Gunev microplate. Here's the spreading center. This microplate is slowly moving east. Both of these faults, the Septornio Oriente Fault, sorry for mispronouncing it, and the Walton Fault Zone have left lateral strike zones. This Gunev microplate, they didn't even suspect it was there um, until the early 1990s. This is the only earthquake that they are showing today. And for the last seven days along this fault zone, there has been other earthquakes down by Puerto Rico along the Enrique Fault Zone. Uh, there was a magnitude 3.2, a 3.3, a 3.6, um, a 3.0, another 3.0. Those are um, also close to the Minetos Trop. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But here we have the uh, Iniquio Fault Zone. Yes, yeah, all right. You know, I have a hard time um, pronouncing this these uh, names. And this is the location of that 7.0 earthquake they had in 2010. There was a paper that I found talking about these two fault zones. I'll give you a link to this uh, research paper. And it shows some of the significant earthquakes along both of these faults. Um, 1862, 1887, 1842. Um... 1562, um, eight, 1692, it looks like it says, uh, 1770, the 2010 one, and 1751, it looks like it says. They were saying that after the 7.7 .7 earthquake that they had in January, they were expecting aftershocks to last maybe a year. And I'm really surprised that a lot of people um, here in Cuba didn't report this earthquake. Um, I'm sure a lot more people did than one. I do not see the location on the felt reports. But here on the moment tensor ball, the first wave of the earthquake, that's the P, came in from the south you can see here that the fault line moved north and tension was applied going east 
hopefully the magnitude of these earthquakes will continue to drop. Um, and they don't have a much larger one. But like I said, this fault line and the other fault line are capable of having very large and damaging earthquakes. So any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.